Hello and welcome to SideQuest. I'm Andre and today I'm going to talk to a few guys that are going to change how we play video games. If you played a game and you've just been that bombastic Hollywood hero blowing up things and just really having no consequence, well, most games now do that, especially from the AAA publishers. But the guys at Two Dog Games are going to tackle what really would go on in the minds and hearts of people in battle. I'm joined today with three members of the Two Dog team, and they are Ken, Dave, and Jake. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. So tell me a little bit about Destiny Sword. Destiny Sword is a strategy combat MMO. So it's a, a social game with a futuristic setting in which you're going to be controlling a squad of soldiers throughout a, a you know, faction versus faction combat. Okay, and you mentioned it's going to be an MMO. So is this going to be a cooperative experience MMO or are we going to do PvP MMO? So we've got all of that in there. We've got player versus player. We've got cooperative battles. But what makes Destiny Sword really different is the way players will be interacting together in the game. So typical games, they use what we call a power progression. As one player gets better, everybody else gets worse comparatively. In our game, as one player gets better, they're going to bring everybody else with them. So it'll be a really team effort to, and everybody will succeed together. So kind of like we will be controlling a squad and I'll be the squad leader giving commands and as the team gets gets better, everybody excels. Exactly, but you also, you, with the other players, they'll also be controlling squads and we'll all be working as a team to accomplish goals together. Very cool, yeah. so you mentioned that it's a tactical and strategy game, and yeah. I know Dave, that's yeah. where you come in. That's right, uh, that's one of the areas that I excel at. So it's, uh, it was really interesting to work on this particular project because uh, aside from regular games where you're simply, you're the independent and you're going out there and you're fighting everything on your own, this really represents the team and working together. So aside from the different combat scenarios that we have, um, we as an individual are trying to nurture our team and make sure that we understand what's going on with the team so that we can make them work as best as they can so that when we go out in the field and we work with other commanders with their teams, everybody works better together. So, you know, I, I like the idea that uh, everybody is going to contribute to it and everybody is responsible for their own piece of their pie when they're in the games and in the combats. Um, so, you know, it, it's got many, many facets of strategy uh, from the team uh, development point of view all the way up to the commander and how they treat their people uh, to how the faction is working to how the support ships are working. It's, it's all based on cooperative work. Wow, so I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of goosebumps here because <laughs> one of my favorite game series of all time was Mass Effect. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. everybody's gotta remember those loyalty missions. <clears throat> so is that something along the lines you're talking about? You're gonna be helping your teammates and then you'll either They'll either like you for doing it and feel more loyal, or will they be, uh, well, you know, dissatisfied with me as a commander if I make the wrong choice? It's, it's sure. all of those things. I mean, uh, one of the big pieces of our pie is, is our AI and our, uh, our character's ability to interact with each other and with their ability to interact with the commander. And uh, depending on how those interactions go, the characters will remember how things went and you will see them either getting more happy or more sad, uh, maybe more uh, inclusive or exclusive. So you'll see those behaviors starting to generate within the characters themselves. As a commander, it's our responsibility to make sure our people are in the right mindsets. And so we'll have to keep working with them to make sure that it happens. And sometimes, you know, they may go down a depressive path. In some cases, they could be happy. They could get a letter from home. The characters uh, could get a letter from home saying that, you know, somebody's getting married and suddenly they're, they're perky in the barracks and you're wow. wondering, yep. you know, what's going on? On. Maybe he's a little too perky in the beard. So you want to say, hey, what's going on? Oh, I, my, my, my uh, partner has just had a child. And this is why they're happy. And, you know, you can, you can have a small conversation with them about so that. So we're, we're really looking at a lot of emotional cues and bringing emotion and, shall we say, depth to characters in, in this type of strategic game, which we don't really have seen before. Like, I can't think of a game no, that has that level of, 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 of detail. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the players are really rewarded for empathic responses. So getting to know your characters is going to be crucial in this game. So, you know, like Dave was saying, that there's all these amazing, you know, uh, stimuli that'll affect the, the characters, but each one will react completely differently to them. Each character has a personality, a backstory, a planet that they, you know, come from, uh, a background that they come from, all that education levels, and all those will 
determine how they react to different different situations. So, you know, one character might want you to talk to them regularly to keep them kind of focused and keep them engaged, and another character might want you to be really hands off. Yeah, like uh, a lone wolf. Exactly. And so you, you really have to understand what makes each one tick to be able to, to sort of help them manage their, their situations. Well, that sounds very, very cool. It sounds like something that uh, I've been a fan of. Uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, some some hints of back to a little game called XCOM. Yeah. So is yes. it going to be anywhere like that? Am I going to be heartbroken <laughs> when a squad mate dies? And and and, uh, and and not only are you going to be heartbroken when a squad mate dies, but your squad will will have you know difficulty dealing and processing that, and you'll have to help them manage through that. And even to the extent where, as a guild, you know you're on this support ship, like Dave said, you know one of the things you can do is use your social currency to throw a funeral for that particular character who passed, and that'll help to give your characters closure. It'll also help to give any other players who attend that funeral, their players, you know, a bit of closure on, on you know, what's happened, that sort of thing, and help them wow. all to become more resilient to things like that. So, so. you're very <clears throat> uh, based or, or uh, kind of trying to do all-encompass emotion and emotional responses. For sure. And uh, one of the ways that we do that in, in video games, or good video games do that, is through the music. Absolutely. So, uh, Jake, uh, tell me a little bit about how either Ken or yourself derive some of the sound for this game because there's a sampler on there, and I gotta say, uh, that's some really, really nice uh, mood Thank you. setting uh, 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 beats. Uh, as, a, as a longtime gamer um, and, and, of course, a consumer of sci fi, like I, mm -hmm. I'm hearing some. some uh, Odes to Halo in there, mm. a little bit of uh, I, I guess felt reminded of Voltron, the new series. Oh, yeah. So you've got it's 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 fantastic. So how do you guys come up with uh, the sound? Well, it's been a massively creatively collaborative uh, process between Ken and I, especially. There's been many many conversations of us hashing out ideas, and and I'll write something and I'll throw it at Ken. Uh, I like to write based on um, like art, and I like to write based on uh, sort of design ideas and, and gameplay itself. So I have a lot of sort of different avenues I can pull ideas from, and then I'll throw it at Ken and I'll see what he thinks, and he throws some uh, some examples and ideas my way that I never would have considered before. Which is what's great about working on a team like this is mm -hmm. that it's so collaborative and, and it's this massive creative sort of fun house that we can just come up with ideas and and we've had a good amount of time to sort of get to this point of creating themes and creating um, sort of aesthetic and creating sounds and textures and all these things, some of that which you heard in the, the Destiny Sword preview album. Yeah. Um, but that's like the tiniest snippet of, of what we have planned so wow. far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be like the tip of the iceberg and you've got way, way more to uh, to please the ears. Well, it's quite, a, it's quite a deep game is, is that. It's like not only with these systems that we're talking about, yeah. um, like the inside engine where you're speaking to the characters and sort of uh, getting to know them and, and helping them deal with their issues and their emotional states. Like that in itself is a system that has so much depth for music. You know, because if you look at a game like Mass Effect, it's all scripted of, of like, there are different uh, branches and paths, mm -hmm. but um, there's like, you know, Garrus is always going to be thinking this one thing and, and feeling this one, this one way at this point in the game. But ours is so much more fluid than that, mm -hmm. is that um, the events that are happening can happen in many different orders and mm -hmm. characters' personalities will, aff will affect that as well. Mm -hmm. So the amount of music that you can do in that one system is like, it's massive. It's so, it's so it's so great. So basically, Ken gave you a lot of work. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I'm so excited to do it. It's, it's that it's, there's so much room for for uh, a great soundtrack here that that is really exciting and, and so much to pull from. It's, so, a, it's a great chance to, to tease our, our upcoming newsletter. We, we've got our first one coming out this week, but next week's newsletter is on uh, Jake and, and his procedural, uh, you know, sort of music uh, system that he's been working out and, and looking at and mm -hmm. teases a few of the possibilities there. So that's really exciting to see the kind of technology you need to support a system like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really working on stuff. It's groundbreaking on so many levels. Levels, you think, okay, it's a groundbreaking game, but then you realize, okay, but that then forces the art to be pretty groundbreaking. Right. We have to have a, mm -hmm. a customization system that can create the variety that we can have in the personalities. So now we need to be able to have an infinite number of visuals on characters. And, and then we need to be able to represent their infinite number of emotions with an infinite <laughs> number of sounds that support right. those emotions. And it's, it just, it, it's amazing, you know, sort of how deep the rabbit hole goes, yeah. but what an amazing team we have that, that really looks like they're, they're pulling this off. And, that, and that's one of the reasons why we have become 
uh, really working together as a group because mm -hmm. the music will affect the art, the art will affect the game design, yeah. the game design will, will affect the overall presentation of the game, mm -hmm. the presentation of the game will get certain teasers and suggestions which may change any one of these fluid pieces mm -hmm. and then we got to turn back to the different groups to say, okay, here is something, you know, we, we're going to look at it in this direction, make sure we can stay yeah. fluid. Can we stay fluid from an art perspective, from a game perspective, from a music perspective, mm -hmm. and to make sure that everything will still gel together? Well, it sounds like you guys are, A, working together fabulously, mm -hmm. but like you said, it's a deep rabbit hole, but every journey has a beginning. Absolutely. And I think it's really important to talk about what is the inspiration? Why did you choose kind of this uh, mental health uh, angle to start uh, a game be, uh, based on? Well, the first and foremost, it, it was, you know, sort of the last few games that I had worked on dealt with combat. I did a, a historical flight sim called B-17 and worked with the veterans uh, researching for that particular game. And uh, it became really apparent that reading all the books, watching all the movies, we only saw the few seconds when these guys were pulling the triggers. Uh, but they had to make an entire life in this environment, and then they had to deal with the repercussions afterwards. And, and some of the people that I've interviewed, the veterans I've interviewed, you know, at 80 years old, still would, like, you know, wake up on the floor, you know, trying to get out of a burning plane or out of a burning tank or, you know, and it's like you realize that these things have a lifelong impact. And, and of course, our entertainment doesn't represent that. So Definitely. What video game do we really see the, the ramifications of loss? Unfortunately, yeah. mm -hmm. you've got to pick up the, the gun or get back into the tank and, 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 yeah. and, and go. So that's, yeah. I think it's a very, you know, uh, poignant thing to talk about now, especially in, you know, the way the world is, oh. and we are actually looking more at mental health not being a crutch, and we, we need to okay. talk about it and get these things in the open, so I think this is, a, 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 you guys are hitting it right at, I think, the right time. And the more we explored that topic, the more we realized that, you know, so much of mental health, and particularly the recovery process, is about community. It's about mm -hmm. coming together and supporting each other. And, and what better format for that than an MMO, where we've got thousands and thousands of players all working together to achieve a common goal, and, and, and if we we can get people to support each other in game who knows maybe there's a, a you know a possibility that that'll carry you know somewhat outside the game and people will start to, to work more and more together definitely and, and we've we've heard stories and everybody's got stories where people they've met in World of Warcraft guilds they become friends in real life For sure. and they go to life events and they yep. meet people at conventions mm -hmm. or go to weddings and stuff so again Absolutely. that's a, it's a it's gaming does bring people together and this sounds sure. like it's going to give people an outlet to not only talk about but to express with other people mm -hmm. yeah. so I think that's a that's a very very cool goal and uh, I, I applaud you for that <laughs> but I also think it's genius because right. I don't think like I said I can't think of any other game that's doing that or any other company that's, mm -hmm. that's even tackling so, that. certainly not in the, the massively multiplayer forum definitely, where, definitely where you not. know we've got so many people sort of looking at that together and and you know our, our goal is really just to, to start that conversation and let the audience take that you know, further really and, and see, you know, kind of where it goes from there. Okay, very cool. So I want to talk to Dave next about some of the game mechanics because sure. you're the, the, the builder of kind of the strategy okay. world and, and, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, from some of the videos and the demos, I noticed that uh, there's a very interesting card element to mm -hmm. the game. You have your squad and you're controlling your squad, but at any moment you can enhance a squad member by playing a card. That's Can you right. tell me a little bit about that? Well, that's, an, that's a great topic to bring up because uh, it is an element that we wanted to have that feel. So for anybody that's role played or played magic or these types of things, there's always that, that textile uh, feeling that you miss when you go into video games. Right, right so that, that rolling of the dice, that throwing down the card, that slapping of the domino, whatever it is. Um, so we wanted to have that feel where, the, you know, again, as part of the commander to engage and to feel like he's a part of it, even though he's sort of watching what's happening to his team. Um, we wanted to give them that ability to sort of, you know, spin the, the field around and apply the card to say, you know, I'm doing this for my team, I'm doing this for, for the, uh, for the boss, against the boss, whatever it happens to be. Um, now, since we've gone to PAX, we've gotten some feedback with regards to that, and we may be changing that dynamic slightly from uh, a card perspective to more of a command perspective. But the feel is still there, that the, the commander is still contributing to their team, helping their team, even though they're still on the support ship. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is still having that feeling, that textile feeling, mm -hmm. except it'll take a slightly different UI. Uh, uh, to it uh, going forward. But again, that's part of the advantage of having our active demo that we were able to take to PAX East mm -hmm. uh, in preparation now for our crowdfunding and then our 
uh, PAX West, you know, all of these are opportunities for us to get feedback, mm -hmm. and that's how we're improving the game based on the players. And you know, they, this came, this came, this was very obvious to me, or this wasn't very obvious to me, or yeah. this took extra explaining, or mm -hmm. or whatnot. So we can adjust these things while we're developing them because you know, at the end of the day, these are the users that we're going to be reaching out to inevitably. Exactly. So as long as it's comfortable to them. We can adjust. That's what we're here for, right? Mm -hmm. We're here to to say a message, but we're here also to have some fun and to put it in a package that, that's uh, user friendly. Yeah, Very cool. It was really neat because, as Dave says, you know, the, the players responded. They love, you know, the tactile feeling. They love the ability to change the course of the battle themselves. But everybody had it, it. Well, at least the majority of our players, it turned out, had this preconception for how cards themselves would be used because mm -hmm. we're so familiar with them as a mechanic, whether it's Magic or Hearthstone or some of these other games. So it, it, the fact that the way we wanted to use them as being such a, a you know, th there's this tactile interaction with the game itself, really kind of was a different, uh, you know, way of uh, interacting with the the cards, and and that was a struggle for people. They had Confused to, un they had to unlearn what mm -hmm. they'd learned and then yeah. learn our mechanics. So changing them into commander actions, the mechanics are exactly the same. You still drag them into the scene and actually touch the characters with them and, and change the face of the battle. Right. But it, it now becomes this more science fiction-y uh, presentation than, well, than the card mm -hmm. element. Again, they, you, you guys are doing so many things right in, in that you're reaching out to the fans at mm -hmm. conventions and all over. Uh, and now you get this feedback so you can change. Uh, and I hear you guys are planning a trip uh, across the pond, shall we say, yeah. to, to Sweden to talk about this game. Yeah, well, and not just to talk about the game, but but uh, Sweden is Nordic Game, uh, their, their big convention, very similar to the PAXs and, that we have over here. Um, but basically, they asked us to come over and talk about designing healthier gaming experiences. Uh, as we've seen, you know, a lot of these games are creating toxic environments. They're creating very sort of, uh, you know, uh, addictive behavior mechanics, uh, things that are very intense, and, and, and people are having a, a struggle dealing with them right now. And so, you know, we really wanted to, uh, you know, sort of help uh, to, to change the way players interact in online games, which is one of our goals with our game, but also on a broader scope as well to, to sort of encourage other development studios to, to sort of think about the again the repercussions of our decisions when we design game mechanics make, what's that going to force a player to do make better games and make people <clears throat> better people through playing games mm -hmm. instead of the Exactly. The, uh, shall we say the toxic person uh, speaking to you over Xbox Live, <laughs> or over Steam Chat, and and, and whatnot? So, For sure. Um, so I want to ask because uh, I'm a big fan of, from a, my comic book background of, about the the art and the design, and and you've got some very very cool sci-fi designs. Clearly, we will be playing humans, <laughs> and we have two human factions. One I'm going to assume are the noble and good guys because they're in white armor. <laughs> Is it a false assumption that the people in black armor might be the bad guys? It is, and that's one of the things that we really wanted to kind of hit people with, is, is to sort of challenge our preconceptions. Uh, and so you do instantly look at it and go, oh, this must be the good faction, this must be the bad faction. The reality is both factions, you know, one is corporate, one is governmental, and both factions think that they're doing the right thing for the right reasons. And, you know, whichever faction you play for, you're going to be sort of faced with all their propaganda, and you're going to be sure that your side right and the other side's wrong and as you play through the game you'll start to realize you know maybe things aren't quite as I thought it's not black and white right. and I I've got to kind of find my own way in these sorts of things and, and that's another sort of thing that we're we're looking at as a as a narrative theme through the game as well and that definitely changes what faction you pick will probably change some of the music cues too it will it will it was funny though to sort of go back to the idea of you see the the black characters and you assume or the black armored characters and you see that they're bad uh, when I was first making music uh, uh, for it, and I had just seen some of the art. I made some really evil sounding music for, <laughs> for a secure core, and then Ken had to explain this all to me. I'm like, that is amazing, that's fantastic. And so we're making the music in a way where the two aren't so different. They'll have some differences. Um, they will have, like, secure core definitely has a bit more, I would say, power to it, um, as they are all about the power and the technology. And then mm -hmm. uh, the protectorate will have um, not so much noble, but they'll have a bit more of a I'm not even sure what word I would use to describe <laughs> that. I should I should be better at words. <laughs> that's why I'm. That's why I do music. That's why I do that's music. Why I do it's music. A bit more of a democratic tone. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. But but yeah. So so to be able to sort of uh, look at those themes of uh, you know not so much good versus evil, but these grayer areas and uh, and just how complicated 
um, the world is and, and right. politics mm -hmm. is. To sort of explore those themes with music is very cool, especially in video games, where Definitely. a lot of the times it is good versus evil, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And also on the design note, uh, when looking at the battle maps and stuff, mm -hmm. I see that there are many different unit types. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the ones that most visually pleased my eye was the giant mechs. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. I know you have a Battletech background. I do. So was that, uh, was that your influence? No, actually. I, I mean, definitely now that I'm involved, uh, there is more of that influence. But it was actually a concept that Ken first came when he had his idea and he and I were chatting about what we were going to do and how we we're going to build this world and how we we're going to make it interact and so forth. Mecca was obviously on, on the table. Now, that conversation has changed to different ways. Yes, uh, I have an influence from Battletech, and anyone that's played Battletech understands these giant mechanized pieces. Uh, anyone that's you know seen Robotech or any of these type of things, our mecha is a little bit smaller, a little bit more uh, you know functional utility type mm -hmm. uh, mecha, but they're mm -hmm. still as awesome as ever. I mean, you know, people will strive for that, and that's part of what we want. But in the same vein, and this is part of my challenge, is I can't make mecha so overpowering that once you have mecha, you don't see anybody in regular armor anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. There still has to be a, a purpose for that, mm -hmm. and that's part of the balance that we as a group uh, uh, see and we play test, we adjust for to make sure that yes, mecha are awesome. Yes, Mecca uh, encapsulates maybe some music and art that people haven't seen before, but we're also trying to make sure that there's still a place for the person with the light armor right. to be on the battlefield. There's a function Boots for that. Boots on the ground, very Boots important. Boots on the ground is important, right? And anybody who's been in the military understands you can't just take tanks to a combat. And, and so fundamentally, this is what we're portraying in a future, ex in a future setting, is that you know, the people who are, who are running around doing recon, doing scouting, are just as important, in some cases maybe even more important, uh, in preparation for a long-term mission. So you know, yes, I, I do love the Mecca, mm -hmm. but it, it has a place, Definitely. right? And, and it has a function. And there are missions for them that you, know, you probably would want to go in with pure Mecca, but there is plenty that if you do so, it'd be to your own detriment. And right. this is what players have to learn. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's a perfect segue because some of the missions we are having a fully functional weather system. So I'm pretty sure monsoon season yep. with electrical storms, you're yep. not going to want to <laughs> have a giant mech that can get stuck in that's the mud, right? right? So. I mean, all the environments are, we're, we're, you know, building them all fully dynamically. So, you know, various things, even what you do in the environment can have an impact. I mean, if you're in the industrial environment and you're in a room full of, you know, toxic or explosive, uh, you know, products, then that's probably not where you want something with big guns. You know, you want a bit more precision, yep. but also, if you're, you're kind of, as you say, you're out in the, the natural environment and it's really rocky and craggy and cliffs and, you know, difficult terrain, there, there's a whole range of places where these vehicles, you know, as cool as they are, just aren't, aren't suitable. So mm -hmm. it's... Uh, aren't the first choice or the best choice. Exactly, right. yeah. That's right. And especially in this iteration, we're, um, you know, we're, we're generating the combat in a certain form. Um, you're going to see and fight in, in a certain form, but the game is evolving. And, uh, and the more that we evolve the game, the more that the people will see how, you know, maybe it's better if I choose, you know, a, a lighter armor or, or, or medium armor it, because of the streets may be constrained in the future. Mm -hmm. So, you know, street size or alley size mm -hmm. and, and that type of thing. So in order to complete the mission, you maybe not, you may, perhaps you can't even fit your mecha, yeah. right? Or it's not practical to use a mecha. Yeah. So, you know, th these things will evolve as time, as our missions get more complex, as our releases get more complex, uh, as uh, our, our fans uh, drive some of our storylines mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Um, we'll uh, adjust as needed because we want to get, you know, most of us have role played and we want to get closer to that feeling. So the bigger part for us was to make sure that we can communicate with our people uh, in a more human like way. And again, it, you know, we're starting now, you know, it'll take steps to get into a really full immersion feeling, but that's where our goal is, right? right. We've got a great team, we've got veterans to help us. Um, you know, so many people want to help us with these things and we want to get there. It's just, we got to take a step, you know? Yeah. We, we can't uh, just hope for the stars and never get out there. Right. Right? We've got targets to meet and we're working towards those targets and then we'll have another release and another release and, you know, the It'll game build. will evolve and, and get us to where we want it to get to. Perfect. So, yeah. tell me about the next target because you guys are ramping up to something I hear. 
So yeah, at the end of this month, May 30th, we're going to launch our Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we mentioned throughout this interview, I mean, it's really about getting the community involved in our process, uh, getting them hands-on with with prototypes, getting their their feedback, that sort of thing. So the Kickstarter is just another great opportunity for us to outreach with them. I mean, it's it's also as an independent uh, studio, you know, obviously getting the word out there. That's the biggest challenge for us. We don't have the big marketing machines that a publisher does, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's a great chance to engage with our audience and, and really see where they want to take it. Gives them a chance to put their money where their mouth is, so right. to speak. You know, do you guys want to see the quest type missions? Do you want us to write more backstory novels? You know, do you want us to do more of the animated sequences and all this sort of stuff? So it's a, it's going to be another really exciting chance to engage with everybody. Well, so during the course of developing this game and this idea, I hear that you have reached out to people in the veteran community. Can you tell me who you have worked with and why it's so important to you? So yeah, I mean. We've got a wonderful team of veterans supporting us, Spartan Wellness. Uh, they're a Canadian veteran support group uh, who have served in, in loads of theaters recently. They've got a fantastic uh, you know, group of guys who, who are really sort of excited uh, about trying to tell their story, uh, explain their experience to people, and, and also see this as a great way for them to be able to, to sort of understand uh, you know, things from, from our perspective, to understand you know, sort of how we see you know, what they went through. And, and so it's just been a great feedback process. So it's a very, um, it sounds like it's very collaborative so I, I'm sure you've explained what your game is and then they give you feedback on kind of their true experiences and emotions and, 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 and stuff. Especially, Absolutely. Especially from the beginning where we've had them work with certain scripts saying, you know, here's a certain condition, you know, are the characters responding as they would and so forth. And it's kind of bittersweet because uh, some of the feedback that we've gotten is that it, they themselves are starting to feel some anxiety because they've had to live through some of these right. things that we're talking about. And it, like I said, it's bittersweet because now we know we're on the right track or we're getting that feedback that we're on the right track. but. You know, it's a, it might be a little bit too close. So let's take a break, and you know, let's chat, and let's yeah. let's you know, just go aside and get some air, and then we'll come back to this. Right. right. And and you know, they're they're finding they they've been telling us that that is they're finding that a very cathartic experience to to sort of go through that and and to to experience those feelings because sometimes they don't realize that they're holding that stuff in, and it's only through experiencing that again yeah. that they get an idea. Okay, that's what's bothering me. And, and especially, I think they must be very excited to have that side of the story told mm -hmm. because how are uh, we, the average individual, supposed to know what they go through if nobody is talking about this? Or For sure. maybe it's in a novel and, and uh, or, or maybe a, a documentary and yeah. people aren't watching this. But as we know, video game entertainment is massive. Yeah. So you guys have the potential to reach a, lo a large audience and educate them on the reality of this uh, of things like PTSD. And not just the combat issues as well, but I mean, just general mental health. Uh, you know, one of the big focuses of our game is trying to normalize the idea that we all suffer with these issues yes. and, and trying to normalize that it's okay to reach out for help, that, that that's not a weakness, that that's something we need to do. So from a mental health perspective, we're also working with Take This, who are a games-based mental health charity, and they're helping guide us. Their clinical psychology team is helping us to make sure that we treat the subject, you know, with respect and dignity, but also that we're, we're getting a, a really positive messaging out there and and really initiating a discussion that's going to help everyday people and obviously you're reaching out to the experts you're not just making this up on right. your own so For sure you've instantly got a lot more legitimacy to the message and the meaning behind the game well and hopefully doing it in a way that's going to help people in a, in a positive sense I mean if we just were to go off on our own and do it you know we'd be very sensational or stereotyped or, or things that might actually hurt the current uh, you know situation and set us back whereas we really wanted to make sure that we were driving you know sort of mental health awareness forward so to do that we had to do it right and we had to get in touch with people who could really help us guide us along the way and you know, thankfully, we've got um, the support of the Al Nolda uh, group as well that uh, have come, uh, went with us to, uh, to PAX East and spoken on a panel uh, with our team to, again, help us understand you know, where we are in this placement. Because you know, mental health, you know, if someone says, I, you know, I have mental health issues, most people around would have this connotation that there's something wrong with me or there's something negative to it. In many cases, as Ken was saying, is it, we all have some thing that we struggle with, you know, be it depression or be it just, you know, a feeling like you're on your own or uh, you might be shy to talk in front of a crowd or, you know, whatever it happens to be. And, and the reality is, is that it's okay to talk about it, you know, whatever the level happens to be because, you know, as more people become aware that, you know, everybody struggles with something, um, including myself. 
So, you know, I, I'm not better than mm -hmm. somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once people can, can look and say, wow, I, that character is going through something that I've just had to deal with. Mm -hmm. It brings, as Ken was saying, it brings up the conversation. Um, and that's all we hope to do is, you know, we in, within the game can't fix people, but in many cases, people might not necessarily need to be fixed, but the conversation, you know, should be had. They have a way to express. That's right. And, yes. and also to see that there really is no normal. Yeah. That's right. Right? Yeah. That's a misconception. That's right. And that's a great point. Like, one of the things about the game is it's, it's you know, it's not always about fixing things. Most games, there's always a solution. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in our game, it's just about the process. It's about engaging with that character and supporting them and building that relationship, building that trust. But you might not be able to actually affect the cure itself. You know, it's just about that ongoing, you know, dialogue that you have with them that, that helps them to, to recover gradually. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's really important, I think, because because so many people, you know, first of all, there's this, this stigma about mental health, and then there's, okay, well, we have to fix it. And sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes, you know, for instance, if we've got a character in the game who's lost a parent, there's no way to absolve that grief. You can't just make them happy and wave a wand sort of thing. Uh, you know, you have to actually work through it, and, and all you're trying to do is build resiliency and trust so that that, that character, in this case, you know, sort of has that uh, bit more confidence and that bit more, is more willing to come to you with future right. issues. Um, and, and that's part of what, you know, again, it's one of the challenges within the game um, is that we, uh, we have images that the, that the players are seeing, so we don't want to necessarily lead the player in one direction or the other. Uh, Jake's done an amazing job with the, mu with the music, but in mm -hmm. the same vein, we don't want the music to lead the, the, the player one way or the other, yeah. because there may not be a right answer. So yeah. if it's a sad piece of music, you know, if the player is feeling sad, well, it may not be necessarily a sad moment. It may yeah. just be a moment to inspire, right? Yeah. right? So mm -hmm. again, this is part of the, the dynamic of the teams working together because we want to make sure that the message matches the music, matches the art, magic, the, matches the gameplay mm -hmm. um, as we move through this fluid system uh, mm -hmm. of, of dynamic uh, interaction. Very cool. Well, I like that you used the word inspire, so I just want to ask each of you about what has inspired you in other media to help you on your path here. And I'm gonna start with you, Jake. What uh, musical inspirations or, 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 or movies or games or stuff do you kind of get your creative juices flowing? Well, some of my favorite games are usually very narrative focused. So Undertale is a big one, uh, along with like uh, Zelda Majora's Mask specifically, um, which dealt with a lot of very difficult issues in a very interesting way. Um, and then music wise, you know, I love, I love my sci-fi, so I love uh, Mass Effect, I love Stellaris, I love all these things, but um, a lot of the music that really hits me is the more intimate, quiet music. Like there's an, an Icelandic band called Sigur Rós, uh, who's really fantastic, and then uh, Icelandic, it's all Icelandic, Icelandic's very intimate. Um, <laughs> but Johan Johansson, uh, who unfortunately passed a few years ago, but he did a lot of amazing music, like for the movie Arrival, um, and uh, for the theory of everything, and, and those sorts of things. So, um, and I also like metal. I mean, like I, I, got, I got this large variety mm. of things to sort of pull from, which is really, really nice, but in a game with so many different themes, and um, you know, going from an exciting battle to an intimate conversation, it's, uh, it's good to be able to sort of pull from the heavy and the quiet. Ken, mm -hmm. inspiration for you for the idea of the game or, or, or just the game mechanics? I, you know, I think there's a whole, like Jake says, what's really interesting is that we've got such a, a broad spectrum of inspirations and that's what allows us to kind of sort of, you know, reach to try and paint this picture that has so many different colors in it. Um, but for me, you know, I, I'm really inspired when, when independent projects sort of, you know, go beyond and, and try to sort of capture, uh, you know, something that's really worthwhile and meaningful. Uh, there was a great French film called uh, Les Intouchables. Hollywood just remade it, killed it, but, uh, but the, and in fact, unfortunately, they took the original French one off Netflix to put oh, the Hollywood no. on, but, uh, so I can't even tell you to go watch yeah. it on Netflix, but, but just, boy, the emotion that came across in that, and, and the humanity, the human story that it was able to capture and portray you know it's like wow that's what I want to do make make something that makes the world a better place and really captures the imagination Dave your gaming background any game systems and stuff we mentioned Battletech yeah. and MechWarrior earlier but other things that uh, right now might be uh, inspiring you or or you know. yeah well I mean uh, as you say I, I've been role-playing for a long time so in role-playing the the most important part about the role-playing aren't the rules it's the interaction mm -hmm. and so um, for a game to be fun, it doesn't really take a lot, you know, mechanically. Right. 
but um, for it to be engrossing and, and to want to be a part of that community, you need more. And that's what we've been allowed to do here. I mean, myself, you know, the role playing is definitely a part of it for that mechanic to, to interact with other players and take on these personas. Um, but also the simple things like uh, uh, the build your own story uh, books where you would read something and it says, if you want to do this, go to page 25. Right. If you want to do Choose this, your own go to, right? Yeah. You remember those? Yep. But again, it comes back, it's a very simple mechanic, but you can build your own world and you, that makes it that much more engrossing. Right. So in this case, we're giving uh, players an opportunity to, uh, to build their own team, uh, to build their, their place and their support ship, to build their uh, notoriety in their faction. Um, they can do as much or as little as they want. They can play as much or as little as they need to. Um, there's no pressure in that regard because we're the type of people that likes to socialize in some, in some respects. So yes, you can do your grinding, you can do your war, you can do your adventure, you can do this sitting on the support ship and talking to people all day long. Whichever it is, there's no negative effect to it. It's just, this is what you're choosing to do, go ahead and do it. You know, we're giving you a way to spontaneously create your own adventure, in many respects. Right. So I love all that. I, I love the spontaneity. I, I, that's one thing you never, I never really got in the, in the video games is, you know, you, you have your mission, go pull, you know, 20 apples off the tree. So you run around <laughs> looking for apple trees and you're pulling the thing and you get your 10, you get this big award. Yay, you've done it. Wonderful. <laughs> On to the next question. <laughs> On to the right? next, exactly. you know, thing. In, in this, you're, you're helping your support ship, you're helping your teams, you're helping your, your faction, and you'll see what the effects are directly. And your faction will see the, the impacts of the support ship, of the characters, of the player. So, you know, that's what we're building. We're building a community. Mm -hmm. um, and we're building the tools to help enable the community to, to survive and, and thrive. Very good. Well, mm -hmm. very cool. As I said, you guys are on the right track. I think you're developing something special. So uh, that's going to be all the time we have, but I want you to tell people where they can find out more about Destiny Sword. So the best place to start is at our website, uh, www.destinysword.com. That's with two S's in it. And uh, yeah, check out all our social links and, uh, and follow and subscribe because it's, there's going to be lots of opportunity to get involved in the process. Get your hands on demos, uh, give us feedback, do all sorts of uh, various exciting uh, things. Well, great. Thank you very much for joining me here today at the Lunchbox, guys. And thank you for tuning in and watching. Make sure you check out Destiny Sword and make sure you follow each of these talented gentlemen as they bring us this exciting game. I'm Andre, and this has been SideQuest.